um, director Greg Basaturian to join us here and give us uh, his discussion on three or maybe more topics that he has prepared for us. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, um, and I'm cognizant of the time, uh, and I respect your time, so we are going to go through these uh, two or three points uh, with a rapid-fire, uh, uh, basically, uh, way. So uh, what I'd like to do first is uh, to talk a little bit about the cost of Hawkins. We will continue talking about it, and we will tell you why we are talking about this, because in November, uh, there will be a ballot uh, under the... Uh, uh, the uh, name of uh, uh, Justice for Renters Act, and uh, that will be repealing or attempting to repeal Costa Hawkins. Uh, basically, Costa Hawkins prohibits local governments from imposing rent control on single family and condominiums, new construction if it's built after February 1995, and it allows a landlord, an owner, what is known as a vacancy decontrol. So in other words, if you have a single family home, you've rented it and the, uh, uh, the uh, tenant leaves, now you can mark uh, to market uh, uh, your rent and basically be able to recoup what market allows you. The Justice for Renters Act says the following, that if you are a city, now you can even go ahead and uh, uh, adopt a uh, um, very restrictive uh, uh, rent control uh, uh, measure, such as our uh, uh, neighbor in uh, Pasadena, uh, which, which is what happened in Pasadena. Now, I want to remind you, if you remember Prop 20 and Prop 10, we came out against it and we defeated it. And this is a version of that Prop 20 and Prop 10, which was put together and put on the ballot by AIDS Healthcare Foundation. If you want to learn more, you see a QR code in there. You take your cameras and shoot a picture of it. It will give you all the facts about it and uh, uh, get ready. This thing will be on the ballot in November. And of course, we will wage a uh, uh, substantial effort in order to defeat it again. I want to talk a little bit about rent control. National Multifamily Housing uh, uh, Council uh, back in 2017, did a report on rent control in the entire United States. And in 2024, they updated that report. And uh, basically, they wanted to find out uh, if there has been any significant changes and whether or not their original findings still hold through. And lo and behold, their research shows that rent control owner rent regulation laws would hurt renters. Uh, renters seeking uh, uh, seeking home opportunity and affordability, and one of the main reasons is because it disproportionately benefits higher income renters. We've always said, and you've heard me say that, that uh, uh, you know this means testing does not exist in rent control measures, and that's problematic. So somebody that is making one hundred hundred fifty thousand dollars would also reap the benefits of a rent control and stay put in his or her apartment. Uh, as far as the insights, they have found out back in 2017, and now it is again uh, uh, reiterated that these things have consequences, fiscal consequences on the cities that adopted, one of which is their uh, real estate tax revenue uh, would be dropping. And they use a couple of examples, and these examples you may or not may have heard us uh, uh, speak about it, but I want to uh, just give you an, a couple of examples of that. One of, one of which was the adoption of rent control by St. Paul. In, uh, and uh, uh, what happened is that after the adoption uh, in 2022, they found out that the real estate prices dropped by 6 or 7% um, in the rent control jurisdiction totaling to a loss of about $1.6 billion. That's what happened in St. Paul. In Cambridge, Massachusetts, the opposite happened. In 2023, <clears throat> Cambridge implemented a $22 million uh, guaranteed uh, income program for qualifying households. 
had they not had removed their rent control measures back in 1994, they would not have, had, uh, they would not have been able to garner the, uh, the monies uh, in order to uh, apply to that uh, uh, qualifying households, uh, the $22 million basic income. And again, in 1994, that's what they had adopted. But Cambridge decided lately to do away with the rent control measures. And as a result, it added value to the real estate properties by $1.8 billion. 10% of that residential property value appreciation came uh, because uh, prime, interestingly, dropped when the rent control was taken off. So I just wanted to give you these two examples. We use these two examples a lot, talking to our legislators and so forth, and we'll continue doing so. Next one that I want to talk to you about is, you see, we say 200,000 plus uh, strong protecting home ownership in California. That's a reference to you as affiliates, as members of the uh, California Association of Realtors, and by its extension, the Glendale Association of Realtors. About 3,000 3, uh, legislative bills are actively monitored by CAR and its 93 different associations. 100% of the bills that have been sponsored in 2023 by CAR have been passed. And that's a uh, uh, really a record uh, uh, even for CAR. 100% of the uh, uh, members that CER contacted on red alerts, especially on WAB, uh, 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 the uh, uh, Fremont uh, uh, senator um, about uh, rent control and the restrictions that they were putting on private property rights, uh, we responded and we defeated those, uh, those uh, restrictive measures. Five times as many people have um, uh, have, have participated in realtors in the red alerts in 2023. That's wonderful. That's good news. I know a lot of you respond to the red uh, red alerts. Continue doing so, especially for stuff that is not only on uh, uh, state level but also on local level, which we'll talk a little bit about it uh, a little bit later on. You heard May Shalhoub talk about uh, the uh, uh, what is called this California Dream for All. And we were an instrumental, uh, instrumental uh, uh, part of this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, legislation passed uh, with the help of the uh, uh, the uh, uh, Tony Atkins, uh, the Pro Tem uh, uh, Senate President, and so forth. And that has been um, continued on. You heard us talk about a couple of weeks ago. Um, and we provided you information to, uh, to check with Cal FHA uh, so you can uh, accordingly advise your, your clients and your first-time buyers. About $3.5 million were collected, and uh, this is all voluntary for uh, Realtor Action Fund. You heard your uh, President uh, Soksoravian uh, telling you and encouraging you to always give to Realtor Action Fund because it helps us find uh, onerous bills and, and ordinances and what have you. What I want to bring to your attention very quickly is that in about a couple of weeks, not a couple of weeks, I'm sorry, about a month, month and a half, City of Glendale will be discussing as a revenue enhancement measure, instituting a transfer tax in City of Glendale, a la ULA, a la Santa Monica, and what have you. Now, um, let me be the first to coin uh, the phrase for this thing. This is a point of sale mandate. And perhaps the harshest form that we can come across. If you decide to sell your single family home, if your client decides to sell their property, today they pay somewhere close to about 0.1 or 1.5% or 1.05% in transfer taxes. That's the county measure, and uh, it's been around for a long, long time. Half of that goes to the city of Glendale. If city of Glendale has anything to do with it, and they want to increase this and make it something like Santa Monica, 
what is going to happen is the chances that your property tax, when you want to sell your property, again, point of sale mandate, right? You will end up paying anywhere between two to three, maybe four times more. So as opposed to paying a thousand or eleven hundred, now you're paying four, five, six thousand dollars, right? And uh, we will be uh, waging an opposition to this issue at the city hall, and uh, we want you to be prepared for it because we are. I've said this millions of times. We count on you as our ambassadors. We need you to show up at City Hall. We need you to uh, be able to voice your concerns about uh, exorbitant uh, uh, measures like this. With that, uh, um, I have to say, uh, uh, President uh, Sorabian, that concludes my presentation. I hope I did not overstay my welcome. Thank you. Not at all. Thank you again. Appreciate the information you shared with us. Uh, Carmen, you have your hands up. Please go ahead. Yes, good morning. Uh, Greg, one question regarding the Justice for Renters Act. Um, I know that you said that um, they have a, uh, one of the points that they're in support of is that the state may not limit the right of any city. Does that mean that the city can go either up or down with the rent control percentage, or is it just making sure that the cities have even more of a stringent law um, than the county or the state. The latter, you're absolutely correct. More stringent laws. Uh, when was the last time we saw somebody turn around, other than the example that I gave you in uh, uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts? Oh, by the way, Cambridge, Massachusetts, one of our uh, candidates uh, who is an absolute yes on rent control, amongst other uh, uh, things, is from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, the candidate moved to the city of Glendale, um, I want to say about three, four, or five years ago. Just uh, wanted to put that out. Yeah, very much an implant, it seems like. Uh, one more thing about the, um, if, if they adopt uh, a transfer tax for Glendale, uh, and, and if you guys want to educate your clients on this, it will discourage property sales for some people. And when properties don't change hands, it does not generate tax revenues for the city. So they need to look at the, the other side of the coin. And uh, hopefully this is an education and understanding that we'll be able to bring to the city officials in order for them to, to do the right thing. Thank you. And uh, President Sorabian, if I may add to what uh, Carmen, thank you for, for uh, bringing all of those up. Transfer tax, by the way, is one of the measures that you can, quote unquote, enhance revenue, right, in the city uh, lingo. Uh, we don't have any problems, or at least not yet, your board of directors has not decided on it. Maybe I'm uh, speaking out of turn. Uh, but there are other measures, uh, tra uh, uh, transient occupancy tax, that affects hotel, uh, hotel occupancy, um, your parcel taxes, which we've had in the past for GUSD and Glendale Community College, and we have gladly helped them and paid for it, right? The problem with transfer tax, folks, is the following. That money is not earmarked for anything, nothing. It goes into the general fund, and all it takes to pass it is simple majority not two-thirds as it's required by a uh, parcel tax. With that, I appreciate it. That is an important uh, point that you brought up, uh, that not every uh, tax-related uh, proposition or legislation requires the same uh, approval threshold. This is one of the dangerous ones that with 50 plus one might get passed. So. We have to be really careful and uh, watch this closely and act. Thank you again. Appreciate it. So on that, on the tax, would it, would it work like ULA where it would be over a certain amount? It wouldn't be just like in, in, in LA where it's, it's so much per thousand regardless of the price. And I know in the Bay Area, like San, San Francisco or San Jose, it's like 12 and a half percent which is an exorbitant amount, especially when you consider the property prices. 
So I'm just curious, is this, would, would this be just like ULA where there would be a, a minimum threshold and then above that it would be extra? And so the report will come back. Thank you, Ira, for the question. Uh, the report will come back, um, I want to say about in about a month or so uh, from staff. But the way that it's arranged or the examples that staff used in their first iteration of this uh, plan was nothing less than Santa Monica, nothing less than the ULA. Keep in mind, the buck 05 per thousand that is being used right now as a, as, as, as a county measure for transfer tax, half of it goes to the city, the other half goes to uh, the county. If the city wants to uh, initiate or start a transfer tax based on the city's uh, uh, requirements and based on the city's uh, uh, prerogatives, then that buck 05 or that uh, 1.05 percent would fully go uh, to to the county. So the city has to make up not only for that half of that, but add something that is going to enhance uh, in there. I mean, it's 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 very interesting using the term enhancing uh, revenues, right? Uh, and it's always on the back of the uh, property owners, right? Uh, but having said that, uh, this is something that would be over and above that, and at least according, <clears throat> pardon me, to a discussion, the first discussion, Mayor Brotman was open to uh, exempt everything up until to, uh, up to the point of $2 million. In other words, have uh, the old uh, five applying per thousand and then uh, change that transfer tax for stuff that is over $2 million. Now, the problem with that is that you have 970 properties that changed hands in 2023 in the city of Glenda. Not all of them were residential. It will affect business properties. It will affect small, uh, you know, uh, two units, four units, uh, uh, somebody that owns a small commercial that is renting out and what have you. And uh, it's just uh, not very well thought through. And you saw what happened to uh, Los Angeles. All of a sudden, uh, the volume uh, dropped and dropped uh, dramatically, and uh, that's what uh, we do. That's that's a consequence that we don't want for the city of Glendale to inherit. Thank you, Greg. Um, any other questions from Greg? Uh, 